Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia to ban deportation of styrofoam containers as of June 1, 2019. USAID helps to strengthen St. Lucia's response to Zika. The ancillary seafood festival is prepped with trained vendors. All that plus the latest new development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. St. Lucia will ban the importation of foam and plastic food service containers as of June 1, 2019. This was announced by the Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, during the debate on the Appropriation Bill 2019-2020. The minister cited research that shows that food service containers made from polystyrene and plastic negatively affects our health and environment. And as studies have shown, food service containers made from what we know as styrofoam, along with plastics, have continued to negatively affect the health of citizens and the cleanliness of our environment. In this regard, the Department of Sustainable Development, in partnership with other key agencies, such as the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, the Department of Economic Development, Ministry of Commerce, the Department of Finance and the Customs and Excise Department, over the last few months, have worked towards the development of a suitable strategy to eliminate single-use plastics or styrofoam from our market and environment. In the first instance, the government will be phasing out the importation of all styrofoam food service containers, including cups, plates, and hinged takeaway containers and other selected plastic cups, plates, and containers. Thereafter, a ban on the use of these products will become effective immediately on June 1, 2020. Any styrofoam and selected plastic food service containers landed after May 31, 2019 will not be released by the Customs and Excise Department. These items will be phased out over a one-year period commencing June 1, 2019 until May 31, 2020. This approach will allow all stakeholders a chance to exhaust their current stock of styrofoam and the selected plastic food service containers and to source environmentally friendly alternatives. The importer will bear the associated costs for disposal of any seized items. Minister Rigobert lauded the private sector for its cooperation in effecting the ban. St. Lucia's response to Zika and arbovirus is expected to be strengthened as the United States Agency for International Development, the USAID, hosted a social and behavior change workshop recently. More in this report from Miguel Morissette. The workshop is aimed at enhancing the capacity of participants to increase the practice of priority healthy behaviors in the community as it relates to vector control. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Sharon Belma George says vector borne diseases are of significant public health importance, therefore, there must be the integration of social and behavior interventions in health programs. I think this workshop is extremely um, timely, and I'm also happy to see the presence of our partners because, at the Ministry of Health, we cannot do it alone. We need the support of all of our partners to get at the level of the communities. Acting Chief Environmental Health Officer Parker Ragnanan says, it is important that a collective action in the community be undertaken for vector control. We hope that you're going to be change engines in your community, in the society, and be responsible to seeing that there is an integrated vector management approach that is undertaken. Because for too long as a country, we've depended on using chemicals to treat for vectors. What we have seen is the results are very clear, that you cannot do the same thing all the time and expect a different results. And therefore, the results that we are seeing is evident that the chemical treatment is not working. A participant of the workshop, Lucy Lubin Girard, believes this workshop will assist her in making changes in the community. 
I am confident that I will be able to facilitate a better intervention program with all the skills and knowledge that I have acquired. I also learned strategies to get um, maximum community participation and involvement, um, focusing on the stakeholders and um, the resources required to effect that change and to be able to monitor and evaluate the impact of the intervention on the ground. Another participant, Alicia Elevik, also shared her perspective on the workshop. We as community leaders, we always figure the main thing is to put them um, out, perhaps if there's a meeting, put the notice on the radio station and expect persons to come. But having come to this training, I realized, listen, there's a target audience, there are other, other factors to be considered when calling a meeting, even when conducting a survey, etc. A key element of the workshop was a data collection exercise on vector control in Grizzly. From the communications unit in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Miguel Morissette reporting. A burst of flavors can be experienced at the Ancillary Seafood Festival come April 26. This follows weeks of rigorous training to shape vendors and their assistants to deliver to international standards. Given the growing trend in culinary travel, local officials are taking bold steps to create a niche around St. Lucia's offerings. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority and the Ministry of Tourism have joined efforts to enhance the offering of the Ancillary Seafood Festival. Under the supervision of Chef Didier Le Beur, 15 vendors and 30 assistants are receiving training in culinary creativity, safety and presentation. The six-week program has afforded the 45 trainees the opportunity to demonstrate their newly acquired culinary skills weekly at the Seafood Festival. Jackie Mathra is the Senior Marketing Manager at the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. With communities like Ancillary helping to drive um, culinary and the culinary experience in St. Lucia, we really saw the need to develop the skill set of our young people and to really bring up our, our level and in, the, in the sense of presentation, in the sense of using our, our local produce and really creating something really wonderful and exciting around the whole niche of cuisine and cuisine tourism in St. Lucia. Aldrick Evans is the chairperson of the Ancillary Seafood Committee. Evans, who operates a smoothie bar, is also undergoing training in mastering the art of creativity, safety and presentation. He says working with Chef Didier is very exciting and the vendors are serious about advancing their skills. With this training, I think it has mobilized the people. The people have learned how to uh, do their stuff a little different, to showcase their, 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 their product. And I think it will be a great thing for them, and this is the opportunity they're going to take now to take advantage over it and then to do a very good thing for themselves because this is what they depend on. So I think they, they're going to do the best out of it. Seafood vendor Nadia Schalmein says the training has put the skills of seafood vendors to the test. She adds that when the training is all over, the ancillary seafood experience will be one with a difference. A lot of changes, certain things that I did used to do on a normal Friday, I will try it to see if it will work. Such as Creole shrimps, Creole lobby, um, fishy, the fish being steamed in banana leaf. We have we tried it and it was a very good experience. The Ansari Seafood Festival will get on the way on Friday, April 26, 2019, when the public will have the opportunity to experience culinary delights of international standards with an all St. Lucian flavor. The Viewfort North Constituency Council has delivered on its mandate to improve the quality of life for residents. More from Chef Roy Marius. Maneuvering over flooded canals is now a thing of the past for the residents of the Viewfort North Kaku community who received a newly constructed mini-bridge walkway donated by the Viewfort North Constituency Council. The handing over ceremony took place during the weekend in the VJ Kaku community. Chairperson of the Viewfort North Constituency Council, Ms. Kate Adme, echoed the importance of Council's role in community development. Let me say to you that Council's role is to improve the people's lifestyle to meet their basic need. The residents on the other side of this road had very little or no access to find themselves to the main road in order to either send their children to school, go to work in order to 
help their financial needs within the family structure, and especially if a sick member needs medical care, it was very difficult to cross through this little structure that you can see in order to get this person to a health in institution for medical care. The Mini Bridge Walkway will provide a secure access route for several families who traverse the route on a daily basis. Local government officer in the Department of Local Government, Ms. Kisha Atil, commended the Viewford North Constituency Council for the timely donation. Today, I am very proud to see that Viewford North Constituency Council is here in Kako to provide some support to the residents by building this access road. So on behalf of the Ministry of Equity, on behalf of the Department of Local Government, I wish to say thank you to the residents for accepting the little that we gave to offer um, to you today. And we, will, we pledge to continue to support in any way that we can. Residents in the community extended special thanks to the donors for the much needed walkway. I would, like, I would say how much we, I appreciate and we in the community, we appreciate the work that has been done there so far. Mokai Hona is up, that Mokai Premier, I said Domi Premier, merci. The walkway is the constituency council's first project in the Vigie Kako community. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevre Marius. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. There are signs everywhere. Pay attention whether you're male or female. Visit your health center to get screened. It's a preliminary test to determine if you are exposed to the HIV virus, an STI, or tuberculosis. Some people who are HIV positive also have tuberculosis. But there's hope. Tuberculosis can be cured. And yes, you can live a full life with HIV. Talk to your doctor. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB, HIV. Encourage everyone to get tested. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update on happenings in youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. The second physical education and sports conference was held recently at the Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary School. Physical Education Specialist in the Ministry of Education, Fenetelis Porris, outline the objectives of the conference. The objectives of this conference are to bring physical education teachers and other sport leaders together in a professional setting to share ideas and best practices, to identify problems affecting physical education and sports, to identify possible solutions, and to generally highlight and raise the profile of the physical education profession. This year's theme is Physical Education for Nation Building. I'm sure everyone in here understands the impact that physical education and sports can have on an individual, a community, and a country. I know firsthand the impact that sports can have on an individual. If done correctly with long-term visionary planning, sound structures, linkages between the various agencies in our system, and provision of the necessary resources, physical education and sports can have a significant positive impact on the lives of our citizens. Dr. Les Paris went on to say that following last year's resounding success of the conference, it was decided that local knowledge, skills and expertise would have again been used for this year's event. She however noted that as the conference continues, there remains a possibility of presenters from overseas being used. In time, as the conference grows, we will invite our colleagues from the region to join us. In the interim, our local persons are getting the opportunity to further develop their presentation skills to hopefully present at regional and even international conferences. Um, I'd like to recognize our sponsors, UNICEF, FLO, and the National Lotteries Authority. Without their assistance, this conference would be a conference on paper. We would still be talking about it. The Mass United All-Star Team, 
chosen after the 2019 Mass United Insurance Under-19 Inter-Secondary Schools Cricket Competition had an outstanding win recently against the travelling Worcestershire Under-19 squad from England at the Grosile playing field. The young Worcestershire team batted first and scored 151 for six of their 30 overs, with Edward Bragg scoring an attractive 56 not out. When the Mass United All-Star team batted, it was a brilliant batting performance by Aki Mogis, who scored a stroke field 78, which contained 11 folds and three sixes that propelled the Mass United Insurance Under-19 team to victory, gathering 155 for six in 27 overs. The Mass United All-Star team comprised Aki Mogis, Efren Charles, Keon Gaston, Marklin Estefan, Diketch Henry, Denzel Roberts, Amari Venner, Tyrone Tielo, Craig Elise, Keegan Arnold, Jadon Elibox, Lee Solomon, and Bolton Sears. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be holding a review of the recently held Inter Secondary Schools Track and Field Championship and the Inter District Primary Schools Track and Field Championship at the conference room of the Ministry on Friday, April 26. Physical education teachers representing the various schools that participated in the two meets are expected to be part of the review. Additionally, among events of the school sports programming for the current term will be special eds, table tennis, and a primary school's netball festival. And that's your update on youth development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Children in the pediatric unit of the Victoria Hospital are expected to benefit from a safe sleeping space as a donation of cribs and towels were made recently. More on this report from Fennel Neptune. The St. Lucia Mother's Day Committee of Brooklyn, New York, recently made a donation of cribs and towels to the pediatric unit of the Victoria Hospital. A member of the committee, Claudia Augustanisla, says her organization remains committed to giving back to the citizens of St. Lucia. We are hoping this will bless the hospital that they will be distributed to. Our mission is to help our home country the best way we can, and when this opportunity comes to us, we could not let it go. We would also like to thank a fellow St. Lucian, Mr. Ernie Johnny, for thinking of us when this opportunity popped up. Departmental Sister of Obstetrics and Child Health Services of the Victoria Hospital, Cecil Marsalis, says she's extremely grateful for the donation of the cribs, which will ensure the safety of the children. This donation is important in that it would assist with the safety of our younger children in the department. Because as we know, children are very active and um, sometimes even though they're ill, but we still need to ensure their safety. A total of 18 cribs were donated to the pediatric unit of the Victoria Hospital. Reporting from the communications unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Préparation et preneur nous cachent de manger mérité à chaque proportion, particulièrement après un désastre. Millions de conseils qui créent empêcher ou joindre maladie. Faites attention au cas de manger. Examinez bien pour voir si dommage et gardez pour date où mérité pas servi encore. Le cas de viande à la main bouchée. Gardez pour ce temps bio libérément. En menu santé, qui a mouché ou qui viande salade examiné et est satisfait pour vendre. Pas de viande, poisson, viande poule et bien l'autre manger qui mérite rester à souffrir du pour plus qu'il Quatre litres de eau et bien au machin. Lavez la main bien et puis savon et glou tiède avant et du moins tant qu'on entame viande qui peut cuite. Servez mon sur planche et l'autre bagaille à part pour couper viande qui pas cuite. Mettez les temps manger tuite en fridge la même après vous servez et pas tiens les pour plus qui dé pour trois jours et les ou qu'avez chauffé fait à six ou il chauffe pile. Changer manger propre car un peu chez maladie ou pour caution. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, cuisez bio information santé à numéro 468 secteur 49. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame, département qui est responsable pour information en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, 
Asume pi Television National pe ya NTN. Kapasato novela kweol. Pwesato Primus Hutchinson. Uh, Continuasyon wa po aso presentasyon bije Premier Ministre Onewab Alan Chasne i pose atasyon aso edikasyon. Selon Premier Ministre Chasne, gouvernement jan mette wanjman plas pou adwese devlopman edikasyon pou tout laj ek pou touche tout sot kalite disip de akademik ek vokasyon des afè edikasyon. Premier Ministre la anonse ki gouvernement kay empouve de gwe kalite edikasyon teknikal et qui aussi pour tuer pour les étudiants participer aussi dans sport, culture et théâtre, à de façon façon pour ça réaliser habilité en total par de yon suivre le programme éducation à l'école secondaire. Premier ministre Chasné déclare aussi que la caïni programme des entraînements pour le développement professionnel pour les instituteurs, ça veut dire à l'école, pour ça capable pour délivrer instruction dans yon haut degré pour les étudiants en pays. Premier ministre là a vrai qui attention c'est pour augmenter l'immo étudiant pour se trouver qualifié pour éducation dans une université. Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasné annonce aussi gouvernement a ajouté 10 millions de dollars en budget à un programme pour rebâtir et pour ranger en neuf les institutions éducation durant l'année financière là. Projet programme computer à l'école qui a reçu 2,5 millions de dollars et si l'on peut administrer ce n'est pas ça qui a facilité ces étudiants pour renforcer la capacité qui est aujourd'hui en éducation programme computer pour préparer les primaires pour l'employement à la terre à présent. Le résident de la commune Vigé Kako en Vieux-Fort a trouvé un grand soulagement de la menace de Godlo. J'ai un petit point qui devait bâtir récemment, j'ai l'occasion de faire un bon report de cervelle pour ces résidents là. Ça, c'est par conséquent des secours qu'on cite pour la commune, en face à notre vieux fort, qui prend l'initiative là pour bâtir un petit point de ça là. C'est au moment pour présenter le point de précours en finissement de la semaine avant en commune vigée. Chef pour qu'on cite notre vieux fort, Mme Kate Edme, pour renforcer l'importance là. Et le rôle qu'on cite là en développement de ces communes, il est marqué que la responsabilité est pour improuver la vie de ces résidents et qu'il faut que ça soit plus ni brisé. Et on sait ça qui est brisé, ces résidents vigés, c'est brisé, ça a été plus ni brisé, ça oui, c'est un meilleur passage pour trouver un bon gros chemin pour l'école et tant de secours et qui est venu. Mais c'est un petit point là, qu'il faut que ça soit plus meilleur route passage. Pour plusieurs la famille qui a servi Tishimé Sala tous les jours. Officier de gouvernement local à département Sala, Mme Kisha Atley, félicité le concept là pour l'initiative Sala et dit qu'il te plaît pour le support qui concept là qui pour tirer pour ses résidents Vigé Kako et aussi remercier ses résidents pour qu'ils acceptent le titre là qui le département a posé à Souyo. C'est même comme il a aussi remercié le concept là et le département pour grand assistance Sala. Construction, type pour ça là, c'est le premier projet qu'on s'est là fait en Vigé Kako à Vieux-Fort. Village Oslaoué en position à présent pour procurer une grande quantité de différents goûts à cette usine de produits la mer qui ont préparé pour le festin qui a venu le 26 avril. Ça c'est pour préparer pour participer dans deux ou trois semaines d'étonnement qui ont posé un pile pèse à ce yo en ligne de ça qui ont pour accompli. Étonnement, c'est pour placer dans la position pour présenter manger dans un degré international en effort pour hausser le degré de production de cuisine au Liban, c'est le C. C'est l'autorité des affaires touristiques en collaboration et le ministère des affaires touristiques qui travaillent ensemble pour aider les villages à cela, oui, augmenter le degré de festivité manger de la mer. Et ça a fait un bar conduit chef Didier, côté 15 marchands et assistants qui ont reçu un étonnement en ligne de présentation pour caution et créative. Il y a aussi Greg, autorité des affaires touristiques, Mlle Jackie Mothre, noté que cette liste a pris une grande démarche pour produire, manger et l'autre façon de produire pour les étrangers trouver un grand bénéfice. Parmi ces participants du programme, c'est le chef comité pour manger de la mer en Slaoué, Aldrich Evans. 
et tu es plein et apprécié étonnement hot chef Didier. Ma chère Nadine Schalmein dit que les gros étonnements qui ont placé dans une opposition, tout bon, avec les programmes qui programme ont entré dans une bout, ils ont avancé considérablement. Festin de manger la mer qui a eu le 26 avril, côté public là, qui a trouvé l'occasion pour expérimenter la cuisine internationale. Et c'est comme ça que nous entrons en bout de nouvelle là, messieurs, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour garder et que je vous invitation. Je ne peux pas encore se dire qu'on se fait la vie, continuez à présenter l'autre nouvelle là, qui est à présent. Nous allons vivre pour Nichelle. Merci, on peut le primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are fair with a slim chance of showers. A gradual increase in cloudiness and showers is expected over the forecast period. The Atlantic high pressure system will maintain a moderate easterly to east northeasterly wind flow across the eastern Caribbean region for the next few days. A weak shear line is causing some showery spells over the central eastern Caribbean islands. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 12.54 p.m. and will be high at 7.29 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay, low at 2.21 p.m. and will be high again at 8.36 p.m. Seas are slight to moderate with waves and swells 3 to 5 feet or 0 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.45 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.